What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and I'm finally getting around to putting together the video on Lord Tachanka's LMG. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. If you're just interested in the final conclusion, feel free to skip ahead to 4 minutes and 25 seconds now, or watch on for some interesting bonus information as well as an insight into the raw data and how I gathered it. As with my last video, let's kick things off with a small history lesson. The man behind the gun is of course Spetsnaz operator Alexandra Senaviev, also known as Tachanka. So Tachanka is his nickname, but what on earth is a Tachanka, I hear you ask? Developed during the First World War, a Tachanka is in fact a horse-drawn cart with a rearward-facing machine gun. And even though it was developed during the First World War, it really had its heyday during the Russian Civil War from 1917 to 1922. Compared to the First World War, this war was far more mobile and having the ability to quickly and efficiently move around heavy machine guns proved to be a great advantage. The impact of the Tachanka on the battlefield was so great in fact that they wrote a song about it. I'll play you a couple of verses at the end, it's quite funky, you'll enjoy it. Looking at the LMG used by Tachanka in Rainbow Six Siege, you'd be forgiven if you assumed that it is a DP-28, despite the fact that Ubisoft ensures us that it is in fact an RP-46 developed in 1946, as you might have guessed, rather than the 1928 version. Now the RP-46 had been specifically developed to be belt-fed rather than magazine-fed, but it was in fact backwards compatible with the pan-shaped magazines of the DP-28. Some of the more profound differences that make this gun look like a DP-28 is the missing pistol grip and the missing buffer spring tube that we would normally see sticking out of the rear of the receiver. These interesting differences are justified by Senaviev being described as a collector of antique weapons, who has purposefully modified his machine gun, even going as far as to mill his own components, should it be required. And to add one last final bit of confusion into the mix, whenever Tachanka is deploying his machine gun in the game, he will actually refer to it as a DP-28. It looks like a DP-28, it shoots like a DP-28, and he even calls it a DP-28. So whatever gun this is really supposed to be, I think we can safely say that it is a very classic firearm. But enough of all this now, let's finally move on to the in-game stats. And here are the results, which were quite simply gathered by allowing myself to be shot with single bullets at various distances to various body parts. I tested the gun against all three armor types as well as rook reinforced heavy armor despite the fact that it's fairly unlikely that you would face an attacker wearing rook armor. As you can see for body shots the maximum damage done by the armor is 66 points against light armor going down to 52 points against heavy armor. Damage drop off is fairly gradual initially but after 29 meters damage drop off is quite significant and the gun reaches its minimum damage capability of 40 against light armor, 32 against heavy armor from 32 meters onwards. If you hit your opponents in the arms or legs, you will do a maximum of 49, 44 and 33 points of damage which will fall with distance to a minimum of 30, 27 and 20. An interesting side note here is that the damage reduction from light armor to medium armor is 10%, or conversely the damage multiplier for medium armor is 0.9 for both body and limb shots. When it comes to heavy armor though, the damage multiplier for body shots is 0.8, but the damage multiplier for limb shots is 0.66. Now I don't know if this goes for all weapons, but it seems at least for Tachanka's LMG, heavily armored operators have additional armor protecting their arms and legs over and above the armor that's already protecting their chest. So making sure that you land torso shots is especially important when you're up against attackers with heavy armor. And that's it for the raw data, time to move on to the final conclusion. Of course the raw damage data is interesting and all, but what we're really after is number of shots to kill. And to present this information visually for you, I've created this lovely heat map. As you can see, if you're landing shots to the torso, you will almost certainly need either two or three shots. Only if you're up against a heavily armored attacker at a range of 32 meters or more will you need four shots. If you're landing limb shots rather than torso shots, you will most likely need either three shots or four. 
and once again it's only the heavily armoured operators that at a distance of 31 metres or more might require 5 shots. So the summary here is that if you're hitting the body you will usually need either 2 or maybe 3 shots. If you're hitting the arms and legs it's 4 or 5 if it's a shield carrier. And there you have it, Tachanka's LMG in depth. As always guys feel free to share this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next episode. But before you leave, as promised earlier, here is Leon Lishner's rendition of Tachanka Machine Gun Cart. Ah! <laughs>